Welcome back to another Post Media Ottawa Senators panel. I'm Bruce Garriott. Pleased to be joined today by Senators Senior VP of Player Development, Pierre Maguire. And Pierre, as we speak today, the club is coming off a, I'll call it an exciting 7-5 to five loss to the Washington Capitals because it was exciting for all of us who were in attendance. But uh, just where do you feel your team is at after this first six-game homestand? Making significant progress, Bruce. I couldn't be more proud of the coaches and the players and the way they responded. You know, it's not an easy league to win with consistency in. But the one thing you can see is now there's an identity to the team. More times than not, and you talked about that exciting game the other night against Washington. More times than not, though, we're very responsible defensively. We're really tough to play against. We're big. We're fast. We're physical. I think DJ Smith and his staff have done a magnificent job trying to get the players to understand the concepts they have to play with. So I'm really excited about us heading out on the road into Dallas, into Chicago, into Minnesota, <clears throat> try to get the team a little bit more together and understand exactly what we have to do to win with more consistency. Well, and one of the things we, we have seen certainly is, can we talk about the confidence that Drake Batherson is playing with right now? Because to me, the second goal where he held on to the puck to beat Samson off, that's a goal scorer's goal, and it takes great confidence to score that kind of goal. Well, Bruce, that's really well said by you. The truth of the matter is Drake is somebody that's got amazing skill with the puck on his stick. And because he has that skill and confidence that you alluded to, sometimes he tries to do a little bit too much with it. Rather than shoot the puck, he tries to make creative plays. I think last night was a testament to him, number one, being coachable, and number two, showing his athleticism. The coaches have been harping on him for a long time now. Shoot the puck. Stop making so many plays. Shoot the puck. And he did do that last night. So that's number one. Number two, this should really help his confidence significantly. We're really excited about what, you know, Drake signing a long-term extension in the summer. Pierre Dorian, Peter McTavish did a great job on that contract, along with Ken Hughes, Drake's representative. But I think the biggest thing going forward is our young players see the growth in him. Yeah. They see the growth in uh, Timmy Stutzla. They see Brady coming back. They see Josh Norris. And all of a sudden, everybody's like, wow, we're going to be pretty good. And we are going to be pretty good. Well, let's start with Brady, and then I want to touch on Tim. But uh, Brady signing a seven-year deal was an absolutely massive move for this organization. You were, you were involved in those negotiations. It was a tough negotiation, but in the end, everybody got what they wanted. Nothing gets done without the approval and, and the support of Mr. Melnick. And I think it's really important to stress that to the fans and, and to the people that are watching and listening to this. Uh, he was unbelievably positive throughout the entire negotiation. Uh, it was not an acrimonious negotiation in public, which I think is really important. It sets a tempo and a trend for what we want to try to do as a management team and as an organization. Uh, Brady's a, a linchpin to this organization. I think everybody knows that. Um, I, I so appreciate the fact that um, Mr. Melnick gave us his blessing. I thought Pierre Dorian, Peter McTavish did tremendous work, just like I think the people at Newport Sports with Donnie Meehan and Craig Oster and Rand Simon did a very good job. So, I mean, at the end of it, we got a long-term deal. Brady's really happy. The organization's happy. I think our fans are extremely happy. But all you had to see was the response of our players when Brady was in the room, Bruce, and how they responded. Um, Brady's a very important player to this organization, and we're very, very happy and proud to have him. And and what kind of message do you think it's it does that send a message to guys like Josh Norris and Tim Stutzla, and that that you got Thomas Shabbat locked up, you've got Drake Batherson locked up, you've got uh, Brady Kachuk locked up now. It, it, that sends a pretty good message to that room, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And that's one of the reasons why I spoke about it before. When you see Drake have a phenomenal performance against Washington with a hat trick and an assist, you say, OK, here's a young guy taking another step. And if you're Timmy Stutzler, you're seeing that saying, that's going to be me. And then you obviously see Josh in the game that he played and the way he's played throughout the year. You got to get excited. And this reminds me a lot of the core that Colorado was building up and yeah. people started to get really excited. And you see Gabriel Landeskog this summer sign a long term extension because they know they have Nathan McKinnon. Uh, they know they have Kale McCarr. Um, so they're excited about their young group going forward, just as we're extremely excited in the future. It's so amazingly brighter. I don't. I know people know we have young assets. I don't think people realize how good our young assets are. And, and obviously, um, you know, Drake is a big part of it. Josh is a big part of it. But Brady's a huge part of it, along with Timmy. 
I was going to say to you, you know, Tim Stutz is uh, an interesting. He's been dancing this season, Pierre, and yeah. boy, he's had some tremendous opportunities. I love going to the rink every day for so many reasons, but number one, to see the smile on Tim Stutzler's face every morning, Bruce, it's just, it's magnetic. It's, it's charming beyond belief how much passion he has for the game. Um, his pride in being an Ottawa Senator, um, he wants to score as badly as anybody. And once he gets one, Bruce, I think he's going to get a yeah. bushel. He's just never going to be stopped. He's as electrifying as any young player in the league, Bruce. He really is. And, and I mean every young player in the league. He's a dynamic player. You can see the improvement from day to day to day. I love the way he's been mentored by our coaching staff. And uh, I just think the future is so amazingly bright for him. Well, and, and speaking of the future, one of the one of your big jobs, and I know you, uh, if you aren't in Belleville, you speak to Troy Mann. I would think you're on the phone with him every day. Let's talk a little bit about some of the guys who who, who are there right now. And let's start with, uh, with Lassie Thompson. I know just – I exchanged a few words with you in the stands the other day, and you're incredibly impressed by the development of Lassie Thompson. From last year to this year. Now, my reference point with Lassie, just to be transparent with the viewership, uh, was world junior hockey. And I thought Lassie was a dominant world junior player for the Finns, which is an important thing if you're going to be a dominant player in the NHL. If you can't dominate a world junior, chances are you're not going to be a dominant player in the NHL. Lassie was able to dominate a world junior, so that helps his development last year was a huge difference for him playing on smaller ice in the American hockey league against men makes it a big difference compared to playing on a bigger ice surface uh, against younger players or maybe less experienced players. Last year maybe was a building block. This year you can see he's starting to separate himself. And, and I can tell you right from day one of development camp to where we are now, Lassie's done amazingly well. He's physical, he's quick, he's shooting the puck like an NHL player, he's passing the puck like an NHL player, and he's really starting to defend like an NHL player. Very, very positive on Lassie. Well, and, and another guy that uh, we haven't – everybody here talks about Anton Forsberg and Philip Gustafson and, and Matt Murray because they're the goaltenders right now. But one of the guys, Pierre Dorian, has kind of mentioned to me that maybe has a pretty good ceiling uh, is is a guy like Matt Sogard. And – you know, he, he may be better than maybe any of us thought. What what have you seen in Matt Sogard? I know he's hurt right now, but he has been very good for this organization. He really has been, Bruce, and good for you to bring him up. Here's the deal on Madge right now. He's going to play in the Olympics for Denmark. Uh, they got in uh, on in qualifying, so that's an exciting part of his development, uh, number one. Number two, he's a huge person at six foot seven. The re he reminds me a lot. I'm not saying he's going to be as good, but he reminds me a lot of Pekka Rene down in Nashville, the way he handles the puck, his size, the way he moves in the net. So I think that's a positive. What really encourages me the most about it, though, <clears throat> our goalie coaches, Zach Burke and Justin Peters, do magnificent work with our goalies. And I talked to Justin Peters as much as I talked to Troy Mann down there in, in Belleville. And just last night before I came on with you, I was in touch with Justin. And Mads is a bit injured, but yesterday they put him through a really grueling 40-minute workout on the ice. They were really happy. They're hoping they're going to see him be able to practice again today, which is Tuesday. And if he can, then that's going to be positive. But his future is amazingly bright as well. And Pierre Dorian is right to have that kind of confidence in him. Now it just comes down to reps and getting tons and tons of ice time for Matt Sogard. Well, and a guy I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about him is, where is Eric Branch Sherman at the moment? You know what I know. He's a good offensive player. He's a smart puck mover. He's got to improve his play in the defensive end, in, in the defensive part of the game, and, and that's why he's in Belleville at the moment. But where do you kind of see him right now? The big, first of all, just for the fans to understand, I, I was there on Saturday night after our tough loss to the New York Rangers Saturday afternoon. Peter McTavish, Pierre Dorian, and I drove down to Belleville to watch him play against Cleveland. They lost a tough 2-1 game. They should have won that game going away. The goaltender for Cleveland was phenomenal. But late in that game, Eric Branstrom was attacking to Bruce's point in an offensive flurry, and he got cross-checked right in the mouth by a, a player who was a very good professional player, Gavin Bayreuther. And uh, he lost three teeth and had significant uh, you know, damage to his gum line. So we'll see how that all translates. You know, that's a tough injury. I had that injury. That's not fun to have when you lose your teeth like that. 
Um, so that's something he'll have to battle through. But in terms of the future, I see it still being very promising. You talked about him having to defend better. That's true, Bruce. He's going to have to defend a whole lot better down with consistency in his own zone. Is he better on the right side or the left side? That's probably a big debate. I think he's probably better on the left. He pivots a lot better to his left than he does to his right. But that's something we have to figure out long term. David Bell, who's the assistant coach down in Belleville, does great work with our defensemen. I expect that's going to help uh, Eric as well going forward. Just a couple more things. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about a defenseman who who isn't with you right now, but is is playing terrific for the University of North Dakota. I speak of number five overall pick in 2020, uh, Jake Sanderson, a guy you track a lot. Oh, I've known Jake a long time. Uh, I coached his father, Jeff, for two years in Hartford. He, I think he had 41 and 44 goals playing for me. Two totally different players, by the way. Uh, Jeff was an offensive player. Jake's got the ability to defend and also attack. Uh, he's a great defenseman. He's probably the best defenseman in U.S. college hockey. He'll go to a second world junior this year representing the United States. He was part of a gold medal winning team last year. Talked to his coach, Brad Berry, a lot. They're thrilled with his development and his conditioning levels. They've had tons of NHL players go through that program in Dakota over the years. And Sanderson's right at the top. Uh, this coming weekend, by the way, while we're on our road trip, Pierre Dorian and I are going into Nashville to watch North Dakota play Penn State. And we're going to meet with Jake Sanderson. We're also going to meet with Tyler Clevin, who's at North Dakota, yeah. who's had a tremendous start to the year, Bruce. So those two assets are huge for our organization. And, uh, we're really excited about the way both of them are playing. But in particular, Jake has been phenomenal. And I would be surprised if he were not part of an RNHL situation sooner rather than later. You know, last question for me, obviously the injuries um, have have uh, taken away some of your depth. You picked up Dylan Gambrell from San Jose. Are, are you as a group looking at another deal for a forward here down the road? I think you're always looking to make your team better. We'll never use injuries as an excuse. That's not part of our organizational mantra, and it's not part of uh, the way we're going to do our business. You know, we're a hardworking, industrious team that's extremely well coached, and we're going to take pride in that, and uh, we'll never use injuries as an excuse. Dylan is brought in here, and we looked at Dylan actually this summer, yeah. um, believe it or not. So he's somebody that we've had a focus on for a while. Uh, he can skate at the NHL level. He can check at the NHL level. He was a tremendous player at the University of Denver. Um, so we're, we're excited what he's going to bring to our team. We may have done this move even if we didn't have the injuries. We need depth at center. So yeah. we're always looking to make our team better, Bruce. We always are. Well, Pierre, listen, we can't thank you enough for your time today and the, the updates on, on all the players and the discussion about this team. I think I think people are excited about this team. The pieces are in place. The pieces are going to be put around these young players. You, 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 there's a lot to feel good about, I feel. We're so excited about the future of our program. And the future starts this week when we go on the road to Dallas and we go into Chicago and then we go into Minnesota. I mean, we're still very much in this thing. And the biggest thing to me is the energy that I feel every day when I go to the rink. Our players aren't down in the mouth. They're proud of what they're trying to build here. And our coaching staff has done an amazing job reinforcing that positive energy. So... I think the future is amazingly bright. And I got to tell you, the atmosphere around the CTC, Bruce, where every yeah. game we played this year has been outstanding. So we're grateful yeah. to our fans. And, and this is really important. I know it's very difficult to earn someone's trust, but I can assure you that this program is going in the right direction and we will earn your trust. There's no question. Great. Thanks very much, Pierre. For My the, pleasure. For the Post Media Senators panel, I'm Bruce Garriock. And thanks again to Senators Senior VP of Hockey Development. Pierre McGuire for joining us.